That's what, it's one of the craziest things I've ever heard in my life. That's not an exaggeration. No, I, 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 out of every like guy who has ever played, every group of friends who ever had Madden, nobody, I don't think anybody in the history of football has ever done that. Hit the subscribe button. Look at this guy in the, in the all black. Max, well, it's, really, it's a it's a navy blue sweater. It's just blending into the uh, into the background. No, but even I mean the background. Just the, you're just like this floating, this floating handsome guy ready to just chop it up with us. Well, I'm promoting Star Wars today. So, uh, <laughs> have you been, man? I'm doing good. Are we talking about the the movie, or are we talking about the Sixers or the Celtics? What do you want to do, brother? Whatever you want to do, man. Why? Who are you a fan of? Well, I'm a Knicks fan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so well, we have nothing I'll, to talk about. You're from like a fake town in New York, right? Listen, I've been following the storylines and I'm very invested. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where are you from in New York? What's the fake town? It's not a fake town. It's a real town called Dobbs Ferry. Oh, I know Dobbs Ferry. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. No, it, it's super fake town. I mean, it's ridiculous. Actually, when when my if you like if I call you, my phone like comes in as Dobbs Ferry. <laughs> Really? I don't live there. I don't know why. That's where. Well, hold on. Well, are you from a neighboring town? Yeah, yeah I'm like not that far away, but I've never like it's not like I bought my phone or did anything in Dobbs Ferry. I was uh, I'm in uh, Mount Vernon right now. So I'm in. Oh, Mount yeah, Vernon, sure. But OK, but I have no idea why Dobbs Ferry comes. and your phone shows up. Dobbs Ferry. Yeah. That's a tough break. <laughs> <laughs> why is that bad? Why is that negative? Well, I mean, the Ferry Bronx, is a little, little eek to you. Like, I'm from the Bronx. And I'm from Dobbs Ferry. Sounds a little silly if we're being honest, Matt. But if we're also being honest, Dobbs Ferry fits. Let me tell you something. Wait, wait, till, wait till the Dobbs Ferryans <laughs> come after your ass after this bullshit they fucking have to hear. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get Dobbs Ferry. Angry, How's your corduroy? Right? You still uh, <laughs> doubling down on that? Bro, I got so much quarter right here. I got a quarter right jacket right here. I'll put that on. Bro. Also, show him your hat. The other day, he just shows up with the hat he's wearing now, yellow hat. It's just sure. a corn hat. <laughs> it just says pro corn. Well, yeah, while you're at it, give us a tour of your kitchen. I mean, where do you guys get corn? The tour of my kitchen is done. Here it is. That's it. That's the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> now, in Dobbs Ferry, you would have a very nice big kitchen there. Yeah, I don't have that new girl money, bro. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, wait, what are you, are you on set right now? Is that why you're in this ridiculous black floating thing? No, this is my kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, we're doing press all day for the valet, and uh, they have me. That's right. Someone, someone did their research. Got you, kid. I got you. It's actually very appropriate. Uh, the valet, the 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 tagline I read was that um, there's some people are in trouble after a paparazzi picture gets snapped. Right. Sure. Which is exactly what's going on at Barstool Sports right now. So very, very good uh, timing on your part. Well, well, there was a there was a picture that was snapped and then posted on the internet of a of a, a office romance, and it let the cat out of the bag, and now it's a whole fucking thing, man. Hold on, I need details. What happened? <laughs> John's like, no, no details. No, no. Let, let's get let's get Max's take. We gotta have Max's take on. Okay, it. all right, Max, weigh in on this. So. Uh, there was an office romance for John. Um, was John like, involved? What's that? No, not this time. This time. <laughs> <laughs> it, it usually is not this time. So it was um, two of like our main people, a, a producer of a very big podcast and um, one of the one of the, the hosts of our podcast. They got together and they uh, they were together for like five years. Um, okay. Then they broke up sometime in the past year. And now she's um, dating another guy in the office and they went to him and they explained like, hey, you know, I know this is awkward. Didn't want it to be this way, but, um, you know, I'm seeing somebody else in the office now. Um, but they told him, but they kept it quiet otherwise. But a fan saw them out on the street together, kind of like holding hands, looking like a couple posted the picture of it. And it set this fan base and this office on fire brother like in a way we have never seen before oh wow 
So where, where, <laughs> where would you stand on that? Or, or, you know, give us uh, say you, if it happened on new girl, or if it happened on set of the ballet or whatever, how, how would you handle it? And what do you think of these circumstances? Well, look, you know, love is love and you can't stop it. Having said that, Maybe you try to find love outside of the place that you work. <laughs> well, and now, so that's part of the thing with both both of them. You know, they both it gets messy when you when you when you date people because then you break up and they might date other people. You know, it's just the, the first relationship and the second one. Both of them are bad ideas. That's easy for a guy like you to say. A guy who looks like you who can go to a bar and women want to talk to him. A True. guy look like me. I got to meet people at the office. True. Fuck that. You walk into a place, you have your, your head to toe in corduroy. Every woman in the room is like, whoa, who is that? He's got some potato hat on, corn, corn hat, whatever corn it is. Hat, corn corn. Crushing it. No. Have you ever had a uh, love triangle situation or a thing with a friend or a coworker or anything like that? I've been with my wife for 107 years. I wouldn't even, <laughs> I wouldn't even, I can't, I'm, can't relate to anything that's happening in this conversation. When did you meet? In 2002. And how old were you? Oh, when you were poor? <laughs> you wouldn't even believe it. <laughs> oh, so she likes you, likes you. I Look, I'm surprised too. <laughs> I mean, I've worked so hard for so many years to trick her. And then I got new girl and I finally was like, I think I got a leg up now. And nope. <laughs> nope. Still. Never. No, no, no. You'll never have a leg up, but it's gotta be nice for her to be like, well, this kind of paid off. At least the long run was good. I think she feels financially validated. Yeah. Everything else is still, <laughs> is still up in the air for sure. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Man. But wait, so how, how old were you when you met her? I was 20, I don't know, I'm 42 now, so. So like 22 I was 22, 23. Yeah. I mean, that's not crazy. It's it's young, obviously. And, when, and you dated for a while and then got married or you got married? Yeah, early? we dated for five years. Yeah, and then, I mean, uh, it's a little bit uh, early for this, this like generation, but not crazy. No, it's a good pace. Yeah. You had your fun. You had your fun. I fun. wouldn't change a thing, John. <laughs> you get the questions like when are you going to propose no she was really smart about it she didn't say a word and then when i went and then when i proposed she and i gave her the ring like her reaction was first this actually isn't bad and then she <laughs> said you had two weeks <laughs> oh Wait, wow that, two weeks? and then she was going to start putting on the press after two weeks she meant no, she was going to leave. She was just going to oh. flat out leave. <laughs> I think the way to get the ring is honestly to not put the pressure on. I think when girls start pressuring, guys get either scared or like defiant. Like, I'm not going to do it. I only had the one experience. And uh, <laughs> and I and she didn't put any pressure. But, the, it, but then it becomes the pressure that you put on yourself. Mm. And uh, that can get intense. You were in your own head, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. It, it sounds like you made the right choice. And and as far as our office, uh, our office drama, you think the heart wants what the heart wants and you can't you can't uh, stop it from happening. I wish them all the best. I'm not here to judge their situation. Smart man. Smart man. That's that's <laughs> that is um not what's going on here at Barstool. I know that might be hard to imagine, but nobody has said that those words at all <laughs> anytime soon. Um, we want to so look us- back at times like this and. And say, we didn't judge, you know, because who's who's who knows? They could get married next year. They could have millions of babies. Yep. And then we, would, you know, that, no, I, I'd step in. That would be too many. One million is far too many. Not three, a, it's a, three. I'll step in three. All right. Or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, so tell us about the valet a little bit. How's the set been? What are the give, give us the dirt on the set of the valet? Not a lot of dirt. Total fun movie. Um do you guys know Eugenio Derbez from uh, from Coda and How to Be a Latin Lover? And I've seen you know Coda. him. I've seen Coda. I have not seen How to Be a Latin Lover. OK, well, Eugenio, who's like this mega star internationally mm. and has had some success over here, um, is like, you know, the Latin Peter Sellers. And so he was doing this movie. 
And it was based on a French film about this valet driver who gets paparazzi with uh, a rich guy who's having an affair with a famous actress. And I play the rich guy, as hey. John pointed out before from New Girl. I just play myself in it. You look um, I mean, you're a great rich guy, dude. You're just very handsome. It's unbelievable, really. Uh, that smile. They all get they all get popped together, and he decides that the only way he can get out of it is if he can convince his wife that the valet Parker is dating the famous actress, so they put on this show. Um, but Eugenio does this amazing job in this movie and play and like toes this line of like what could be a ridiculous storyline and plays it with like a lot of heart and um, and the movie is like one of those movies that they don't make anymore, which was sort of like these family oriented films that. You know, you hate to call it a feel good movie, but it's like there's not a lot of feel good movies. And at the end of this movie, you walk out, you're like, that was a really nice movie. Mm -hmm. we, we were just talking about this with Judd Apatow. And he was like, yeah, it's all superhero stuff. There aren't comedies. There aren't fun movies anymore. So this is nice. Fill in the void. Yeah. Huh? It fills the void. It's like I, I'm not one of these people who like it's all just remakes and superhero movies. And I hate that. I like the remakes. I like the superhero movies. But I don't understand why there has to also be this glaring lack of like comedies and feel good movies. No, I'm watching funny. seven shows right now and they're all about some sort of murder. Right, <laughs> right. Like, can I get, I, I enjoy those, but at, at the same time, like, can I get a little change of pace? Yeah, like I got plenty of murder at home. When I go to the theater, I want to see something else. There's murder at home in the kitchen. We got, we got all that. I, I honestly think true crime has kind of ruined the world in, in, a, in a lot of ways. I like it, but also it's like, Let's pump the brakes. I don't need to see, you know, severed bodies and kill dead children and stuff every time I turn on Netflix. It's too scary. World's scary enough. <laughs> are you, are you, uh, do you, John is a very anti uh, documentary guy. Hate him. Hate him. Why? Because they're not real anymore. They used to be documentaries, right? And they would tell real stories and they would be educational. Now they are clearly produced to, uh, elicit a response and they're fake. So that's why I do like the docudrama. I, I enjoy that. What tipped it for you? Uh, making a murder. When it was clearly... That was pretty early. Did it. Stephen Avery, Avery clearly did it. So did Adnan. Adnan clearly did it. No, he didn't. He was yes, involved. He did. But he didn't do yes, it. He did. Adnan did it, dude. No, he didn't. He did it. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. No, he didn't. We're still fighting the good fight for Adnan and Serial. What did it for me was the staircase. The staircase the I watched. Staircase. The staircase oh. I watched before, but even before True Crime came out, I watched the staircase. Then it made it to Netflix and they added three new episodes. I watched those. And then I find out from my own reading, the guy took out an insurance policy the day before she ended up dead. And they didn't mention that in the document. I mean, how do you not mention that? His other wife also died the same way. The same exact way. If you push your, your wife down the stairs, we're coming for you, Max. We know the I truth. To mention that in a documentary. How? I like to watch them. And uh, my wife and I will watch at night. And then I usually fall asleep with like 15 minutes to go. And then I have to ask what happened at the in the morning. Like, hey, what, what, what was the ending? Was yeah. um, and then at some point, I'll be like this. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> i'm also very easily persuaded so i'll watch you know one episode i'm like oh he did it and then i watch the next episode i'm like well well maybe he didn't do it i'd be terrible on a jury i'd be so bad at jury duty which i've somehow avoided my whole life i feel the same way i feel like i'd get to the I, i'd be like who am I, I who am i to make this decision i don't i don't know just like you said about you know like i'm not gonna judge anybody it's like well that's what you're here to do you're here to judge these people i don't know i you know it's not my place terrible dude i, I said it on like a, a different podcast where i watched uh, loose change in high school and i came home and i had my parents sit down and i was like you guys you're gonna want to hear this <laughs> It turns out the American government did 9-11. Go to your fucking room. You're grounded. <laughs> I checked out. I was done. <laughs> well, that there's none of that in the ballet. <laughs> yeah. no well, honestly, that, we like it is it is a good change of pace because everybody everybody's now a political expert, a scientific expert, 
a foreign relations and war expert. And, you know, it's like, just shut up and let's have you know how long it fun. takes to become an expert at something. And they are just magic. There's no the way there's, all that, there's this many experts. Yeah. <laughs> and they're all on Twitter. Apparently, who knew? Shocking. Oh, God. Do you do social media? You, you kind of promote your things, but you're not in the weeds on social media, right? No, I, I honestly when I when I have to post something, I reload the app post and then take it off my phone. Incredibly smart man right here. Incredibly smart. Well, you know how to download it, right? The app? Well, yeah. So you just download it whenever you want. I never got that when people said that. They're like, during finals week, I delete the app. Like, well, just, yeah, that's what I do. You can just but, but it's like an extra step. It's not like you can't get it, but it's like, it's I got an easy step, fellas. What I do you mean? Know. You and me are usually, you know, give me, give me a little bit of a hurdle. I'm not doing it anymore. That's true. If it rains, I, I don't. <laughs> Hold on. What's the, uh, what, I don't understand. What's the other option outside of deleting the app? And well, there isn't one. There is one. I'm not saying like. Oh, okay. There's yeah, self, self-control better. really is what it is. Oh, no, I have none. I, the, here's my biggest problem is that I will go on there and then start scrolling. And now it scrolls you into other people, like like things they think you want to see. Yeah. And then I just watch a bunch of people getting into like bicycle accidents <laughs> for like That's pretty good. an hour. And I'm like, oh, shit, that looks like, oh, man. Ooh, why'd they cut out? That guy's probably dead. And then... <laughs> I'm like, why am I doing this? <laughs> That's this, well, it's an entertaining, you know, half hour, isn't it? I was going to say, as far as Twitter goes, bike accidents is pretty good. I can't do it. I got I got I to gotta, I gotta get in, post it, get out. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you seem like a, you're, you're a good role model on how to live your life in this day and age. Got a happy family. Stay off of social media. Don't get in anybody's business. Make a bunch of money as a movie star. I want to be you when I grow up, man. What? what yeah, keep, it, keep it simple. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, <laughs> real easy. Um, were you able to watch any of um, uh, Minx of your former co-hosts, uh, co-stars new show? Jake? Yeah, of course. What'd you think? Fans? Yeah, I do. I, I like it a lot, actually. It's the best. A lot of a lot of um, male frontal. And we were trying to get Jake to go to go the extra mile and do it himself. He said he wouldn't do it, though. Uh, this is the first question I asked him when uh, <laughs> when he was doing the show. We, we had and a little then, more. And then he, he like, all Jake talked about was dick. So this is perfect for him. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are talking that talking dicks, man. He was it was the first question I asked him. And then he said. Yes, of course. I the shows, you know, it's a big male nudity is a big part of the show. Of course, I'm going to show mine. And I was like, good for you, man. <laughs> and then <laughs> based on like the casual reaction, I guess I had, he goes, no, I'm not doing I'm it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'd have an anxiety attack. <laughs> um, out of out of um, the whole cast of New Girl, who would be the most comfortable if, if they were doing a movie or show and, and they had to go full frontal? Oh, me for sure. I basically did it on New Girl. I was running around on that set shirtless and all but nude in every, especially the first season, in almost every other episode. There is, there's a big difference, though. That last bit there is a. Uh, when it doesn't run matter, when you get to that, when you get to that point and like. You're just like, you're just like, who cares? Whatever, dude, <laughs> which is a scary place to be, because there is a lot of people that care, like the whole crew. Nobody wants to see that. Right. <laughs> like they're not they're not great with it, even though you're at a place where you're like, I guess I don't I'm fr- I guess I'm, this is sort of freeing. <laughs> it just sort of is what it is. It, and it, you uh, forget uh, that yeah. the, the rest you forget, like everyone around you is like, hey, man, nobody wants to see that. Put like cover yourself up. Oh, I, I was saying I made my acting debut recently and uh, I was told to bring a pair of boxers that would match my character. And I brought four pairs of good. Were they, were they corduroy? Yeah. <laughs> corduroy brought- boxers might be the next thing, John. Put that. Make a note of that one. Oh, dude, that would that would tamp you down too much. That <laughs> would tamp you down. You'd be you'd be real flat dicked in, in a corduroy. But I brought four pairs of good dick boxers. And then one pair that was like kind of what they were asking for. And they made me wear the ones they were asking for. And I look like a eunuch in the whole goddamn video. <laughs> it sucks. Have you seen you it? I don't know that. You're too hard on yourself. Me? No, I don't. Yeah. Think so. Never. John. John's not hard on himself at all. He loves himself. 
I think the problem with this one is he wasn't hard on himself for, for, this, for these scenes. I think I had like a random ball popping out the whole time. <laughs> uh so so the valet um is what what's it out again may 20th may 20th may 20th i think think it's next week yeah that's oh my god that's flying may 20th on hulu uh you can catch uh, him and the boys uh him and the whole crew so um we always uh we always try to get something out of the uh some sort of secret out of the the new girl uh, crew every time we talk to you guys you got to give us something every single every single time we're looking for a headline what's something you haven't ever told anybody about new girl that never has made it to air i'm with robin uh who did my makeup for all seven years is it what what is there anything i can't <laughs> robin goes, i can't say <laughs> yeah there's there, there's deep dark secrets on those sets i know it there always are um I don't know that I can give you anything, but I would I would say that you want to go down if you were going to go down a path uh, as true crime. Uh, yes. Investigators. I would lead you to Justin Long. OK, see, this is that's this is going to be the beginning of our new careers, John. We're going to do true crime. I know you don't like it, but it's true crime. New girl style where we will investigate the deep, dark secrets of that cast and crew. And we begin episode one with Justin Long. Listen, I'm going to the Justin Long episodes right now. That's what we're going to do. Episode one. Nothing, ha- <laughs> nothing happened. It's just Justin Long's really funny. And <laughs> I want to put him on the spot. He, he has a great line when he talks about drawing porn to jerk off to. Very yeah. funny. See, <laughs> you don't know what you just opened up Pandora's box. We're going to make up all sorts of headlines now about Justin Long on New Girl, man. Great. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. I, I, what, I, what is the best Schmidt line? What's your favorite Schmidt line? Um, I don't know if I have a favorite line. And also, what happened to the douchebag jar? I love the douchebag jar. I think it's I think it's in the Smithsonian now. <laughs> well, no, I mean, where to go? It was like what first two seasons. It was big, right? Uh, you know, here's the thing, John. I know. I didn't pay attention as much as the people who watched the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, is so, yeah. it is so weird. It was it- really like the show honestly turned into Jake and I doing bits. And then filming it. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of like whatever happened on the show, it's always like news to me. <laughs> and it was just Jake and I yelling at each other. Here's what would, here's what would really happen. Here's you want to. This is a secret. So it's not even a secret. This is just what happened. So Jake and I, uh, at some point, we were the hours were really long, and. I was not interested in staying in my trailer the whole time because I get bored and lonely and scared. And so I would just hang out in Jake's trailer and he would often try to kick me out. At some point, we decided we should start playing Madden. And to avoid fights, we said we weren't going to play against each other. We would play on the same team. And one of and one of us would be the offensive coordinator, and the other one would be the defensive. Coordinator. Honestly, that is the deepest, darkest secret ever. That is the craziest thing two That's dudes it. have ever done. It's absolutely insane. If you and guys, then, if you guys told me you used to just kill people on set and murder them and chop up their bodies, that would be more normal than two dudes playing on the same Madden team. I, we would pretend we would pretend to be the coaches, <laughs> and. We would be the offensive coordinator and the, or the defensive coordinator. And it resulted in some of the biggest fights between the two of us. <laughs> we played 700 seasons. I, I can't even tell. But what? Yeah, one that's of actually would, worse because, like, if you're my defensive coordinator and you, you give up an easy touchdown, I'm like, you asshole, now we don't well, have a chance to win. That would happen. And one of us would blow it in the Super yeah. Bowl or the playoffs. And then we would get called on to set. And we would be not on speaking terms and have to do a scene. And it would just be us screaming at each other, like, like right off the bat. And they're like, you guys just, this is supposed to be a nice scene or like, or just a simple thing. And it would turn into Jake screaming at the AD going, well, if he didn't let 
up a touchdown against <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> what? This is insane. Max, this is insane. <laughs> if he didn't go for it on fourth and one like an idiot. Yeah. I, 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 mean, I mean, that was. That's what, it's one of the craziest things I've ever heard. In my life. That's not an exaggeration. No, I, 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 out of every like guy who has ever played, every group of friends who ever had Madden, nobody, I don't think anybody in the history of football has ever done that. Crazy. Look, we we're disruptors. We're <laughs> we're barrier breakers. <laughs> Listen, I, I know you probably hate stupid questions like that. Like, just tell us something that happened on the set. But that answer is going to bring so much joy and so much argument and content to this website. So I thank you for putting up with the question because the answer was phenomenal. <laughs> All right. True. The valet on Hulu, uh, May 20th. Go check it out. Thanks always for the time, man. Thank you, Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Later, brother. Make sure you subscribe to KFC Radio on YouTube to get all the video content. Uh, subscribe, comment, like, and make sure you turn on the bell notifications so you know whenever new video content drops. I want to say something, but the video has to be fast. That's it.